What's up everybody? I'm Adam from K6ARK Portable Radio and you're probably wondering why I'm wearing this. This is my radio chest harness that I use for search and rescue and Josh, KI6NAZ of Ham Radio Crash Course, recently did a fun video where he reviewed one of these, a very similar model with uh, an Abri model available on Amazon for a pretty darn good price. So after that video, I figured I might as well show what I put in mine and how I carry it uh, for search and rescue purposes. Now, not all of the equipment in here is going to apply to you as a ham radio operator or even just an outdoor person going up into the hills, but uh, figured you might find it interesting. So let's dive in. So this is the smaller harness. This is the one that I've got loaded right now, and it's the Coaxure Scout RP1. It's got two pockets on the front instead of three and is just a little bit smaller overall. It doesn't quite have the capacity, but it's more comfortable to carry and wear when I don't need too much stuff in there. First, we'll start with the radio and the radio pocket here. This is a Woshun KG UV9D. On this, I've got a Smiley quarter wave whip tuned for the SAR frequencies in the 155 megahertz range. Attached to it as well is a Kenwood SMC34 microphone. These are actually made for FRS and GMRS units, but what I really like about them is that they've got the built-in volume attenuator on the mic unit. So I can have this radio in the chest harness, and if I want to adjust the volume, I just sim simply turn that dial down, and I'm not blasting uh, you know, loud communications throughout the group. So the other thing we've got in the front pocket here is my compass. This is a Sunto model with adjustable magnetic declination, which is a really handy feature for quickly finding true north, uh, or true bearings, I should say. It also has a clinometer built in, so you can measure slope angles in avalanche terrain. It's got map uh, grids on the sides here, so you can measure distances in uh, 24,000 scale, 25,000 scale, and 50,000 scale maps, which are the common topo maps we're given. Also in that same pocket is a signal mirror. I've got the signal mirror in a little sleeve here to help protect it. If you buy a signal mirror, get an actual glass one. Glass ones work so much better than uh, the cheap plastic ones. They don't scratch nearly as easily, they last much longer, and they're just far more effective. So I highly recommend carrying the little bit of extra weight to use a glass signal mirror. So the only other item in the front here is the pen. Got to have that handy for taking notes and recording information as we find it in the field. So that's everything in the outer pockets. Let's slide those items out of the way and let's dive into the main internal pocket. Got a roll of duct tape. It's just an essential item for emergency repairs, uh, first aid, you know, building splints or uh, putting some tape on hot spots to help prevent blisters. It just comes in handy to have a small roll of duct tape. Trauma shears. Trauma shears are obviously incredibly useful for medical uses, but also for non-medical uses. If we need to cut a rope or a piece of webbing in the field, trauma shears are a very safe way to do that and a very effective way to cut through. Nitrile gloves. I keep a couple of pairs in this chest harness handy and ready to use. My headlamp. These zebra light headlamps are really some of my favorites. I like that they operate off of a single AA battery. They perform well with rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries and they have a wide range of adjustments from bright to dim. You can get them in a variety of different colors from cool white to warm white and also high CRI LEDs in some of them. You can get a spot beam like this one which has a decently focused spot and a bit of a spill beam or you can get a frosted lens for a 90 degree flood or one without a reflector that's a 120 degree flood. So a wide range of options there. Highly recommend these headlamps, they're fantastic. Next item in the chest pack, paperwork. Got our T cards. These are the cards that we use to check in uh, to searches and trainings on the team. This contains information about ourselves, our qualifications, time in and out, cell phone numbers, field qualification information and emergency contact info. So very important tool for us to have. 
some tracking forms. We use these forms when we are uh, looking for a subject that's lost and need to record specific information about their tracks. Soap notes. Soap notes are an important medical tool. These have uh, been in the pack for a while, as you can see, but still fully functional. Soap stands for uh, Subjective Objective Assessment Plan, and it's a, a tool you use to take notes about uh, a patient that you're treating so you can document and assess their medical conditions and plan your treatment for that person. So these are a really useful tool for wilderness medicine. I get poison oak very easily, so I carry these IVX cleanser towelettes. So if I encounter any poison oak in the field, I wipe myself and my gear down with these as soon as possible after the encounter to try to prevent myself from getting a, a very painful and itchy rash from a horrible, horrible plant. What else do I have in here? Extra batteries. I've got extra batteries for the headlamp as well as the handheld flashlight. I've got a Sharpie to write on either duct tape or trail tape. Trail marking tape is a really useful tool as well in search and rescue to mark clues or uh, ingress or egress routes for uh, other rescuers coming to help you out. Spare pen in the pack more nitrile gloves, you can't really have enough of those, and a tape measure. The tape measure is useful as a tracking tool to measure the length, width, uh, length and width of tracks as well as uh, step interval or stride length for tracking purposes to help uh, identify the, the person that you're tracking and match up tracks later. So that's it. That's uh, the primary set of tools that I carry in this pack. If I need to carry a GPS as well, I'll sometimes carry the larger pack because it's got that extra pocket on the outside. You can see that one here. So this one simply has three pockets. Uh, it's got the main radio pocket here on the front and the center, uh, another pocket on the side, and another pocket on the other side. It's also got two pen slots and this other, other zippered pocket on the front that I often use to carry the headlamp. I find that that's a really useful place to store that. So I forgot one thing that I had had in my jacket pocket from the weekend, and it's a right in the rain notebook. An essential item for taking notes at the initial command briefing and throughout the day as you're out searching and gathering clues for the search. So essential tool you gotta have in there. So I hope you enjoyed seeing what I carry in my Coaxure Scout RP1 chest harness or the slightly larger RCP1 Pro chest harness for search and rescue use. Whether it's the smaller Scout RP1 model, the larger RCP1 Pro model that has three pockets on the front, or one of the cheaper brands you may find on Amazon. And while they may look a little funny in an urban setting, they're really useful packs to use in the backcountry to carry your radio gear and some of your 10 essentials close at hand for easy access. So I hope you enjoyed seeing what I carry in my radio chest harness for search and rescue use. I'm sure you can take some of those ideas and apply them to your own uses, even if you're not a search and rescue member. So thanks for joining me today. Till next time, I'm Adam from K6ARK Portable Radio, saying 7-3.